Good day, everybody. This is Black Consciousness Today. I'm Pat Wallace, and we are back for another discussion about Black Consciousness Today. We have in the studio, we have Mr. Michael Clements, we have Mr. Ron Thornton, and we have Mr. Arthur Powell. And we are going to get right back into where we were. We were discussing how the Willie Lynch letter is still impacting black people today in a negative way and how we overcome this negative uh, uh, image that we draw of ourselves. Mr. Powell, we're going to start off with you. Let's talk about the current events of this. Well, first of all, let's thank the viewers for being out there. We want to thank you for being our producer. And we want to thank God for making all these things possible. Well, events, history is history. It's a record of the past. It's something that we should learn from. But apparently we have not learned to overcome certain obstacles of the past, a mindset. We are, say, a rainbow hue version of God's most precious creation, black people. We have varied colors within that. So if you take a flower garden, you go out and you cut a bunch of flowers, they all look different, but you put them in a bouquet, as they call them, range it. It's one of the most beautiful creation is. But we don't see ourselves as the beauty of nature because of the Lynch syndrome. It still exists. And we still think that we should hate each other, I just use that term, and be separate and control each other, which was a means of controlling our forepath back in the day. Now, we have a high institution. We've got people of all types of degrees. But this is an issue we don't address. And I think it's something we seriously need to eternally sit down among ourselves and rationalize and I say, why is it today that black against brown, brown, why do these things still exist when we see it? We're all in bondage in a sense. Some may have a three-car garage, big fancy bank account. But when the system puts out them Statistics on black America, everybody's included in black America. So I, my thought is, when I speak of black conscious, having discussion, it's not about what's in your closet, what you got, how much education you got, how many times you've been to jail, or whatever. It's not about that. It's about us looking at ourselves as people. Circumstances happen in our life. You don't have to come out and tell us what happened to you, but we're looking at circumstances that affect us overall. We can look at those circumstances, have discussion, say, yeah, maybe we should this, maybe we should that. But we find a way to go around these things, to uplift ourselves, learn how to respect ourselves, learn how to respect each other, embrace each other, forgive ourselves for our wrongdoing. But we call it injury to ourselves while we're angry at our brother and sister. These things we need to consider. I think if we do that in time, our future generation will have a better place in this America. Gotcha. Mr. Thornton, our guest today is Ron Thornton. It's our, his, his first day in the studio with us. Welcome, brother. What do you have to say about the up, upliftment of black people? And what do you have to add to this discussion? Well, uh, again, thank you, Mr. Wallace, and hey, the panel guests for inviting me to such an uh, uh, important uh, community. We're talking about things that happen in, in our community now. The uh, mistrust, uh, black consciousness. Uh, why, 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 why are we going in the wrong direction as the so-called black people? But, you know, as, as, as you very well know, if anybody of consciousness know black is, is not, it's an adjective. It's, you know, we're not black people. I don't know any real black people. I know some dark hue people, but getting well, back well, to we know that black folks is a, yeah, is not yeah. a race. It's it's a yeah. it's an experience, right? Yeah. So so what 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 I like to address about about this Willie Lynch, since you all talk about Willie Lynch, uh, let's let's peel back some of the layers of what Willie Lynch and and, and this stuff as we have this self hatred for ourselves. How did we get like that? You say uh, different colors. Well, I say, let me make this statement first. As one of the representatives of the independent nation of the Alabamos, right here in Macon County, the ancestral lands 
of the Aboriginal people. We, 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 we have to look at the evidence, we have to look what's in our heart. Uh, who gave us these terms? Who gave us these names? When we didn't speak their language, what me and you and our pound guests are speaking, those are not our original languages. Whether, hey, you claim to be from this land or you claim to be from another <coughs> land. But let me add this. I was reading something today about Harriet Tubman. I read a lot, I have a lot, a lot of stuff. She said in one of her quotes, in her book, I got, I got her book, she said that I rescued everyone, I rescued over a thousand slaves if I knew they was a slave. Mm. So she couldn't identify all the people who were slaves? See, we got to go back and hey, uh, look, at, look at the evidence and, and with a positive, open mind. Right here in Tuskegee, Alabama, was one of the most powerful confederacies of hey, several aboriginal tribes that we belong to. It's evidence. The evidence is overwhelming. So sometimes you have to start back from scratch. Huh? Well, let's, let's, let's assume something. If we, as people of color in this part of the state, have anything to identify and unify all of us, it is an experience of being black. That's not a race. Now, the experience of blackness, as, as I define it, now maybe this is just me, but black people are those people that can identify their families going all the way back through Jim Crow and tracing back into the 1800s <clears throat> as being part of the experience in America. Now, that doesn't apply to people that just came over here in the last generation from Africa or anywhere else. Right. Right. I'm saying the people that endured who, you know your grandmama told you what happened back then. And I'm saying if you have family like that, that makes you black, in my, in my opinion. Now, right. black people in general are very accepting. We'll accept people into our race that may not even be necessarily black. And like I said, I shouldn't say it's a race, but I'm saying we accept people in as people of color. All right. A lot of us have different origins, but we all identify as black. Well, yeah. now remember last year there was a white lady that tried to do this. Donna Zal, she tried to identify as black. Now. What was the problem with that? What was really the problem with that? She wanted to be black so bad that she adopted everything black and had people identifying her as just a very fair-skinned black person. Now, she wanted to be included into the black race. Why was she not included when we include so many other people? Why? Well, because she did it under false pretenses. Right. You know, now, now I went to college with people that you know, hey, this is my brother, he's an honorary black person, or whatever. But don't try to fake it like that. Right. Because the black experience is something that I don't think that ever should be compared to gay rights or women's rights oh, or anything I like agree. that. I, I don't, I don't, I, I feel like that that's totally wrong. Now, right. when we talk about black consciousness as a group of people and understanding that shared experience that we all have with your grandmother, your grandmother, your grandmother, and a lot of our great grandmothers will say, well, you know, my dad was Cherokee, or my dad was Choctaw, and you know what I'm talking about, all right? right? We got this all over in our family. So we as people that accept people of color, this is, this is how we do it. Now, well, let, Mr. Clemens, let me, let me get no, Mr. Clemens in here, because we have well, yet to hear from Mr. Clemens. Well, Tell us your point. Well, just, just think about how Willie Lynch uh, syndrome, you know, really got in play. After the, or uh, at the dawn of the Reconstruction in the South, you know, slave masters, they sold their oats, so to speak, throughout the uh, black populace over a period of years in slavery. In other words, their offsprings were left behind. And because of their offsprings being left behind, it did have some type of allegiance toward them, you know, where they cared for them. And they wanted to uh, educate them 
at the same time, while <coughs> educating their offspring, they propagated what Willie Lynch had put in place, you know, pit this group of blacks against this group of black, blacks, make them think they are, they are better than this group of black, and then you can control them. So they came up with the idea that we have to educate our children. And they came up with several universities. Many of the HBC universities today were not pure HBC colleges. They were all colleges started by the white slave masters to try to educate their offspring. Uh, there were several universities during that time <coughs> that once you applied for uh, enrollment at a certain university, they had one well-known, I won't call the name right now, I'm not going to push the envelope too far, but you had to send a photograph of yourself. If your photograph didn't fit a certain profile, you was not accepted in that university. As a, as a student there, so that's what's going on, you know. But uh, I like to continue, just not really talking on the line, but just to make a, a statement, profound statement, which was already in place by Martin Luther King. He said it so much better that we are all endowed with certain ineligible rights. Number one, life, because why? Virtue we were birth. We were born here in this world, that life, liberty, which we were denied for several years in the pursuit of happiness. And through this Willie Lynch theory and through our lack of black consciousness, you know, we were denied the, the pursuit of happiness, you know. But we'll uh, hold off there for a minute. All right, we'll be right back. Mr. Powell. All right, I appreciate everything your brothers have said. It's history. But are we learning from the history? Today, we have a situation in our midst as a black family. Right off. Took this little article from the newspaper here. Young fellas, guest of the county. He wanted to get married. Sheriff allowed him to get married. Stuart is his best man. And he said the young fella made some mistakes, but he deserves a second chance. That's the spirit of black country. I think we as a people deserve a second chance. But are we willing to open our hearts and minds to the realities of today and take a lesson from what our grandparents that we knew, the struggles that they had to overcome? How years ago, there was less crime among us, less hostility among us. But because we got integrated, thought we were free, whatever you might want to call it. We lost perspective of ourselves. We wanted to become like other people. Yes, we've heard it since I was a child, how they took the mulattoes, put them in higher positions to control the blacks. But when you look at the broader picture today, the mulattoes are victims as well as we are. But the serious part is, we are victimizing each other. That is the part that I would like for us to focus on. What are we doing to each other, our fellows, our cousins, our relatives, in, the, in order to attain these really material things? The system puts, puts us all down in one lump when it has a desire. Yes, it has the class, we got the elite, we got the highly influenced, well educated, blah, blah, blah. We got the poor, we got the middle class. But we all, I just turned one family, the black African American family, we all linked in there. The only way for those at top to truly be successful is to lift those up from the bottom. And the only way that uh, those at the bottom can be lifted up, we need to have some conversation throughout all our community. Yes, we need people to call in, we need people to write letters. I need people to stop and see me at McDonald's, you know. I'm always up. This is a conversation we need to have about the problems of today. Taking a lesson from the past, how they did us, considering how we're doing ourselves, and we train our mind, rethink, give ourselves a re renewed mind, a renewed spirit, a human compassion. 
I mean, that's what God created us for, you know, come on. Everything that the white man has, we can attain. We may not have as much money, but together, we're the most powerful nation on earth. We can do almost anything except come for God. Well, this is a question that I would have to the community right now. There's an email address at the bottom of your screen. Now, we are looking for the solution to these problems. And I know that the answer is out there somewhere. Now, we welcome and encourage your in input. This email address, all of us will see it and we'll be able to give you feedback on what you say. Maybe we, you can add to the conversation and uh, maybe you have an idea that none of us have thought of. Now, let's, let's, let's keep it moving. Pastor Thornton. Red Chief. <laughs> this is the Red Chief now. Okay. Tell me this. Today, right now, what do you say? Because we can, we can rehash history all day. And that is true. But today, right now, what do we say to young people and people in general to empower them? and encourage a strong spirit of black consciousness or consciousness in general for the human spirit, especially people of color. What do you say to them? Well, I, I can. <clears throat> when you have a problem, you got to look at the root cause of the problem. You always, sometimes you just have to start all over again. And we, hey, we, we had 50 years of integration that didn't work. We want to eat other people's food, Europeans' food. We want to go along the side of them, and it destroyed our economic status. But that, that was planned, see. We got to look at, uh, I'm going to say this right quick, and I'm going to get back. Uh, on this Willow list, that was just a tool of colonization. Uh, we, we, and, and this is happening all over this planet. Everybody want to be a European, because right now they got the power. They think they have the power. But let's get back here locally. All right, we, we, we talk about black consciousness. First, we're going to have to start being accountable for ourselves. To ourselves. Now, for me personally and other people, we are disconnecting from this U.S. government. And it scares people to death. I, I renounce my U.S. citizenship. Just look at it on A. Because we was part of the original people that own this land. We have aboriginal rights, just like Australia, just like in Africa. When we use these terms African American and Native American, there wasn't no such thing as America. That's terms that people who colonized us, and over the four, five hundred years, they got it pretty good, and they still doing it. Hmm? So, first, we got to hold ourselves accountable. Tuskegee, Macon County, Tallahassee, Union Springs, we talked to Daveville, all in the, we were the last holdouts. All the Indians didn't go to Oklahoma. We're going to have to start right there. So we're going to have to hold ourselves accountable. Why, after 40 years, right up and down our streets, look at our community. Because we're looking for handouts. We're looking for handouts. Now you want to get in, I'm going to quickly say this. This book right here. Tuskegee, the bill in the Tuskegee. Just very briefly, they passed these books out uh, Christmas, at, right before Christmas uh, 2014. <coughs> Early history, the bill in the Tuskegee. I want, I want you to zoom in on this. People didn't read them. This right here on the second page. That's a picture of Osceola, which was born right down there in the Chihau area where us three gentlemen are from. The other guy right here, his name is Thomas Woodard Simpson. Thomas Woodard Simpson. His father was a European, 
His mother was an Indian. <coughs> he founded Tuskegee. It says it. This is coming out of major university at the bottom. Brigadier General Thomas S. Frontiersman, Indian fighter, plantation, politician, Indian agent, historian, laid out the town square of Tuskegee. He is credited with being the first permanent white settler in Tuskegee. That's not a white person. He was an agent. I have his book, too. Because why I say this is important, Tuskegee, the town square, was a chunky field for our people. It was a ball field. I have the, uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll get back to that. We're going to let, hey. Well, I'll yield some more time to you. I'll let me think about what you're saying. Let me, let me hear absorb some of that. You no, know. oh, well, the evidence is here. I have tons and tons of evidence because that's what I've been doing since I quit Christianity. Well, let me ask you a question. Here's a question. Today, right now, how <coughs> do you turn that information into knowledge? How do you turn that into knowledge? That what, you can manifest some positive energy out of that? This is what we're doing at the Independent Nation of Alabama. That was the original name of this land. We got to get back to teaching our youth, our elders, our elders held a lot of stuff back because of money and shameful and Christianity. But we got to find our song. We got to go back to our culture. See, we have a new, unique culture. Look at the, uh, uh, the traditional ways living on the land. Fred Byers had another Indian friend called me. I don't watch TV and... He said, man, it's a, it's, it's, it's a tornado's coming. See, they had they scare you with that TV. We've been having tornadoes for thousands of years. Take cover. So, but we got to get back to uh, uh, teaching our youth the culture, the language, the traditions, the government, how to govern ourselves and disconnect from this system that is burning, and that's this United States of America. Okay, uh, as one of the reps of the Council of the Independent Nation of the Alabamos, we welcome your comments. We welcome you to come out and see what we are doing to hey, change people's lives. What I, well, uh, teaching the young, teaching the elders about the rich history that we have here. I'm not from Africa. My people are from him. I got a little Scottish in me, but my people, because the original people that occupied this land were people of a dark hue. So let's talk about black consciousness. Who were the people here? Yes, we know. White people, Europeans, they good at colonization. Just say, hey, go to Facebook. I'm talking to a young lady right now in Reunion. Africa, and they go on through Afrocentric. They call it themselves African when they're not Africans. So, you know, let's have this discussion. Come visit the chief out there at the trading post, the headquarters of the hey, Independent Nation out of Alabama. We're making it work. Well, we discussed the past. We discussed um, Black history. We discussed Reconstruction. We discuss the struggle and we discuss education. But let's bring it up to the future. What's going on today? We're going to have to bring about black consciousness. So we're aware of a people that's not aware of their past is destined to repeat themselves. So you got to go back into your past so you don't make the same mistakes over and over again. So we're going to bring it up to today. We got to Learn how to motivate each other. Motivation is the key factor to get any job done. If you're not motivated, if you don't want to get up out of bed in the morning, you're not going to go to work. So we got to learn to motivate people to want to be aware of what it's going to take to get black people on the same level, conscious of what it's going to take to move us forward. You know, hey. We want businesses 
striving because black people are interested and got the idea that, hey, we got to be supportive of each other. We can't pit one against the other, you know, like Willie Lynch want us to do. That's in the past. That's over. We got to learn to love each other. Just because one brother is making great strides, don't get jealous of him. Work with him. When he make it to the top, reach back and grab him, another brother, and pull him up. No, what we're doing and what Willie Lynch wants us to do to say, hey, this brother is getting ahead of you. Stop him. We don't need that. You got to be conscious that we all are in this together. And just like I always say it at every program, Jesus Christ, all he asks is that we love one another. That's not just for black people. That's for everybody on the face of the earth. Love one another. If you can achieve that, the job is halfway done. You are right. You God are right. has blessed us with a precious resource to do all these things. And it all comes under the spirit of black consciousness. Kind of black country. It's a broad concept. But just like a jigsaw puzzle. Matter of fact, it's just like the Bible. The Bible is like a so large, but it has a whole lot of little pieces. And you have to stand step by step because you cannot encompass the magnitude of your whole of it. For the spirit of black country, let's say the little paper where the sheriff stood in for the young fellow. That's a portion of black country. We have mind, we have intelligence, we have people who invented things when they were slaves. So we have the ability within us. But to bring that ability out and coordinate it in a unified effort with the true sense of purpose, that we establish the person, not that established for us. That's what's going to make some difference. That's the question. The one thing grander than the sea is what? The sky. And what's grander than the sky? The human spirit. Once the idea comes to the human spirit, let's say it's unstoppable. It can conquer any elements that the force, but it has to be connected with the power of God. And let me say, as Franklin Douglas said one time, Franklin Douglas said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. To the poor, the neglected, the rejected, it is an idle, hollow mockery for us to pray to God to break the oppressor's power. While we neglect the means of knowledge, which will give us the ability to break the powers that be. If we will come together, it takes time. We have to plant the seed. Because I'm not talking about overnight thing. We plant the seed today so that your, our grandchildren and grandchildren will reap the benefit of our efforts today. We can complain. And some of us are doing well within our complaints. But if we want to be uplifted as a people, if we want a better America, we are the people have to put in the work, spend the time and the energy, but we must begin internally among ourselves. We come together. Then we have power to influence those who are on the outside who would rather not see us to come because we have taken the initiative. We have used our mind, put our hearts and thoughts together. And as our old folks should say, tell God and he will make it happen. I will believe in God. For those who believe and those who don't believe. No, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in this one man stuff. I mean, we, we're going to have to come to terms with this, a hey, this religious stuff, because it's part of that colonization. It's part of that Willie Lynch. White people are saying Jesus is white and y'all say he black. Well, somebody lying. Well, I tell you what, everybody. This is Black Consciousness Today, and I guess we got our subject for the next episode next week, okay? Because we're going to have to really get deep into that, too, because that's that's a side of it that I've heard in, in many places. So join us next time, and that email is still down there. We're looking for your input. Thanks a lot.